I love that new intro. Something in there for everyone. If you can't find something about sports that you don't like in that intro, I don't know what to tell you. We tried. Great job by the production staff on that. Welcome back, everyone, into Hall of Trivia on HQ, our sports and, fan and fantasy theme trivia show sponsored by the Hall of Fantasy League and the Hall of Fame Resort and Entertainment Company. I'm your host, Jeff Eisenman. I'll be your host tonight. We've, we're back, and we've been back for the whole new season of Hall of Fantasy. Tonight, we are going to bring you a general sports and fantasy theme show. Hope you've been studying or just naturally know your stuff. First, let's head over to the Start Sit Fantasy Pick and Bull brought to you by the Hall of Fantasy League. Each week, we will give you two or more players from a specific sport. You pick the player you think will have the most fantasy points, more fantasy points, head-to-head. -head. That week, get the most wins by the end of the contest, and you and whoever is left will split a grand prize. That is still going to be the turn. It will be good, I'll tell you that. Last week, we gave you Cameron Crutwig versus Ethan Thompson, and despite Oregon State getting the win, it was the big man from Loyola, Crutwig, who scored more fantasy points. Second straight time that's happened. Last college game for him. He got you guys a W. This week, we are going to the NBA, and we're circling a game tonight. The Hawks are taking on the Suns, and we're giving you two young studs. We got Devin Booker from the Suns and Trey Young from the Hawks. Remember, most fantasy points tonight. That's what you're looking for. And your time to pick one of them is now. Good luck. There will be one winner. I mean, I guess they could tie for fantasy points. We didn't have that, that issue with football season. We could see it with basketball season. These guys are sure to put up numbers. What do we got from you guys? Trey Young, 54%. I kind of expected that. Probably more of the fan favorite, but Devin Booker was the all-star this year. Good matchup tonight if you like young gunslingers on the court. All right, now we have an incredibly important announcement that we've been teasing, we've been holding on to for five months now. The Hall of Fantasy League, our presenting sponsor, launched today. Congrats to them, awesome stuff, let's go. But what is the Hall of Fantasy League? Well, it's the first national fantasy league staked by you, the public. So what does that mean? It means there will be 10 fantasy football teams representing 10 different cities in the U.S. And you, the fans, will be able to stake your money on the teams. You see them right there. Philadelphia Powder Kegs. I see Texas Yallers, New York Bodega Cats. If the team you invest in wins, you will end the season with some extra money in your pocket. Folks, the days of no one caring about your fantasy team are over. If you love fantasy sports, the Hall of Fantasy League community is for you. For more information, for more info, go to thehofl.com. Thehofl.com. You might even find me hosting some content there soon. Who knows? And hey, I would not be surprised to see some Hall of Fantasy League prizes and swag coming down the pipeline on this show. Now, it's time to do that trivia. All right, I'm going to ask you 12 questions about sports and fantasy. If you get all those questions right, you and whoever is left will slip the prize pot of $2,500. Let's get ready to grind, folks. I see we got almost 40,000 people in here right now. $2,500 up for grabs. We are going to head to the batter's box. You won. And we hit 40K. Nice. Q1. Q1, 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 Q1. What is the name of Arizona's MLB Spring Training League? The Cactus League, the Grapefruit League, or the Justice League? Asaf, I think people thought I was actually a robot there for a second. Like I was just, I was just formatted here to ask Q1. Which by the way, the two spring leagues are the Cactus and Grapefruit. And the two states are Arizona and Florida. You just gotta match your fruits and vegetables, yes I'm calling cactus a vegetable, with your states and then you know that the Cactus League is in Arizona. So Cactus League was the right answer. By the way, uh, this is a true story. I got pricked by a cactus in Florida once, in my grandma's front yard, my Grandma Sandy's front yard, all right? So I could have got that wrong, but you should have got that right. 21,000 of you did. Q2, which of the four major North American sports has a Hall of Fame located in Ohio? Football, hockey, or basketball? Well, folks, I will tell you something. We talked about the Hall of Fantasy League in the intro, and that is based in the same place. The Hall of Fame with all those busts of sculpted heads, that's in Canton, Ohio, and that's the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's what we were looking for. 
and a nice job by the 19,292 of you, just a shade under 20,000 sticking around past the first two questions. By the way, I don't know if you know this, the inaugural 1920 NFL season had five teams from the state of Ohio. State of football, folks. Q3, which of these schools had teams in both the men's and women's Elite Eight this season, this March? Baylor, Yukon, or Michigan? The Bears, the Huskies, or the Wolverines? Some, some strong basketball pedigree here. Michigan and Oregon, they had success in both brackets, but they only made the Sweet 16. Baylor is the only school with both men's and women's teams making the Elite Eight. Even though, of course, the women who are always highly ranked, they barely lost to UConn. We talked about it in the lobby. They put up a fight, almost knocked him off. The men are going on to the final four. The Baylor Bears men's team for the first time since 1950. 16,736 of you. A couple of you looked at UConn and Michigan and thought maybe that was the answer. It was not. Q4. Who was the first Asian-born woman to reach number one in women's singles tennis? Naomi Osaka, Lina, or Sonia Mirza? We're bringing the tennis questions for you folks. We're between tennis majors right now. Mirza actually became the number one doubles player, but not singles. Lina won two Grand Slams, but she peaked at number two. Osaka has four Grand Slam titles and has spent 25 weeks at world number one. And oh, by the way, she is only 23 years old, so this woman's still got a lot ahead of her. I know, listen, I feel like the people that said Lina are the hardcore tennis fans that had to think she had to have reached number one once. Number two, and you're number two on this answer. And I'll tell you what, you don't get it right. You're not number one. You don't get to move on to Q5. That's where we're going right now. Q5, which of these teams does fan graphs give more than a 0% chance at making the playoffs? Baltimore Orioles, San Francisco Giants, Colorado Rockies. And yes, you read that right. More than a 0% chance. The Giants may be old, but they made the, almost made the playoffs last year, and they at least have a shot this year, the San Francisco Giants we're talking about. However, the Orioles, who are throwing Matt Harvey out there, the Rockies paying other teams to take their All-Stars, they're each at 0.0%. And, uh, and you guess what? That is a sacked question right there because people thought the Orioles and Aaron Donald's going to take you down. That's Cincinnati getting taken down. Uh, maybe you didn't read the question necessarily right. They have, this team has a more than 0% chance. Giants was the right answer. The Orioles, they're in trouble this year. Q6. Which of these men's teams was the worst seed to make the Elite Eight this year? This March, UCLA, Oregon State, or Oral Roberts? The worst seed to make the Elite Eight in the men's tournament this year. They were picked last in the Pac-12 Conference this preseason and wouldn't have made the dance if they didn't win the Pac-12 Tournament, but 12th seeded Oregon State played in the Elite Eight last night. Beavers lost, but they made it there. I might see some of you put Oral Roberts here because they made a run as a 15 seed that ended in the Sweet 16, and we saw some, it's not sacked, some people did think it, but Oral Roberts, they lost in the Sweet 16 as a number 15 seed. Oregon State actually made it to the Elite Eight, and so 5,698 of you. Nice job. You've made it to halftime. It's time for the halftime tweet and greet. I asked you on Twitter if you could make one change to March Madness. Well, what would it be? Of course, we got some spectacular answers. These were some of my favorites. Jay Mastrano Jr. said Final Four Round Robin Tournament. Reminds me of the 1980 Olympics. It wasn't actually a gold medal game. Everyone played each other. That's how it worked, Round Robin. Uh, Couch FX, hold the women's tournament either a month before or a month after the men's so they wouldn't be on at the same time. UConn versus Baylor was better than Houston versus Oregon State last night. It's an interesting sort of idea, and, and I think it is saying something. You know, they're in competition a little bit right now. It'd be nice to see them different so that we could focus. Focus on Q7 if you're still around. Oh, Coach FX, I apologize. I'm being told that is actually uh, Coach FX was who did that last one, not couch. That Not sitting on the couch. Out there coaching FX. Q7. Which of these players did not get traded by the Orlando Magic at last week's deadline? Nikola Vucevic, Terrence Ross, or Evan Fournier? 
We got some foreign guys in here. We got some Americans. And, and listen, the magic went wild at the trade deadline. All-star Nikola Vucevic went to the Bulls. Aaron Gordon moved to Denver. And Evan Fournier went to Boston. Can't really shoot the ball right now, but he's in Boston. They all left Disney World. Except for Terrence Ross. That's right, 6,551 of you. Terrence Ross posted Captain Phillips. The GIF, I'm the captain now. He also said that uh, he looked around. He's the oldest guy in the locker room. It's a new era for Terrence Ross in Orlando. Q8. Who was the only player to steal more than 20 bases in last year's shortened MLB season? Trey Turner, Whit Merrifield, or Adalber Aldebert Adalberto Mondesi? You know, I didn't get it in the, in the rehearsal. I tried to get it now. That's Raul's son. This guy basically lapped the field. He doubled former base stealing champs Turner and Witt, who each finished with 12. Mondesi had 24 steals in the shortened season last year. He was the guy that you were looking for. 2,808. Uh-oh. You know what that means. Someone's getting sacked right now. Send him back out. Aaron, get back to work. It's your off season. But you got to take down, is that Joe Burrow? Uh, by the way, keep that in mind for fantasy football this year. Mondesi, base stealer. And he is, like I said, Raul Mondesi's son. Q9. Which of these players is currently shooting over 50% from three-point range? Luke Kennard, Tony Snell, or J.J. Redick? Reduce. Who's shooting well? It's not the Dukies, folks. The top three-point shooter in the NBA by percentage right now is Tony Snell at 57%. If the season ended today, he would set the all-time record for three-point percentage. That would break Kyle Korver's mark from 2009 to 2010. I like that no one said J.J. Redick, who's one of the best three-point shooters of all time. They're just, eh, he's not what he once was. Kennard's doing well, but it's Tony Snell, 2,264. Some of you asked on Twitter, harder, harder. You wanted harder. Well, we still got three questions left, and we have less than 3,000 people. Q10, who is the youngest player to ever win the Stanley Cup, to win the Stanley Cup, a world championship, and Olympic gold? Sidney Crosby, Wayne Gretzky, Jonathan Taves. We're going over to the ice. Anyone watch the new Mighty Ducks yet? Winners of all three are members of something called the Triple Gold Club in hockey. And no one got there faster than Blackhawks captain, Jonathan Taze. He got there at age 22. He actually won a world championship while he was still in college. 1,528 of you got that. I think some people were like, Crosby, Gretzky, who's the outlier here? Nice work. Uh, Gretzky actually never even won an Olympic medal. I believe he only played in one Olympics in 1998. And Canada didn't medal, so he just won't get that one. Q11. Which soccer player was the first to become a majority owner in one of Europe's top four leagues? Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, or Cristiano Ronaldo? And this might make your head spin a little bit. There are a lot of elite Ronaldos, and if you know the difference, that means you probably know your soccer. The one we are talking about for this question is the OG Ronaldo, just Ronaldo. The guy who led Brazil to that 2002 World Cup title and bought Real Valladolid in 2018. Did I get that right, Asaf? I did. Nice. 789. Look at this. We are, people are winning some cash this week. Although I know we got a big Q12 coming. It's the final question coming up, folks. Don't stop at the almost 11. Get to the terrific 12. I think I can trademark that. March Madness doesn't have 11 or 12. Q12. Which MLB team has the best opening day winning percentage? Dodgers, Yankees, or Mets? Dodgers, Yankees, or Mets? The best opening day winning percentage. They may win the most, statistically speaking, on opening day. And this one may shock you. It shocked me. The Yankees and Dodgers are two of the most successful storied franchises in MLB history. But it is the New York Mets with a 661 winning percentage that are opening day's top team. And that's after losing the first eight in franchise history. Are you kidding me? 720 you. We're like, come on, Jeff. We got this. 720. We're winners. Nice job. You have won. Call a trivia $2,500. You're probably a little disappointed that some more people didn't get that wrong, one wrong and say Dodgers, Yankees, 
Look, if you did, if you're one of those people, I would have been right there with you. But I didn't know the answer ahead of time. Are you questioning you kidding me? The Mets? Well, that's what we got. And Johnny65 knew that. Brady54, JKBCM. How about a very Katie with a black cat there? You had good luck this time around. Theo Goner Babalu. Someone just named Psycho is going home with 348. Miro Slacks uh, Cesspool. That's an interesting name. Alan Shea. Nice job. Fibindicio. Smith, 2126, Dan Stepp, got a nice tie, I need that, uh, that's a nice nice look you got there. NS, 2593, the Catsman, 24, knock it down, Swedina, Tony Ferris, for three, bang. You are a winner, all you winners, I guess you're like the Mets on opening day, getting that victory, that's what that must feel like. So congrats to you, we play Hall of Trivia, by the way, every Tuesday right now, Tuesday, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and we have a ton of great sports games coming your way. For more news and information on the Hall of Trivia, follow us on social, at HQ Sports and at the HOF League. Remember that, the HOF League. That is a big, important follow right now because we want to thank our sponsors, the Hall of Fame Village, the Hall of Fame Resort and Entertainment Company. How about the Hall of Fantasy League? Launching today, congrats on that. TheHOFL.com. I got the whole studio clapping right now. No one can even hear them, but they're into this. The, the, the or the, however you say it, the HOFL.com. Give it a look. I've been your host, Jeff Eisenman. Until next time, have the best fantasy version of your week. You know what they say. Score some touchdowns, knock down some buckets, hit some home runs. I want to see some aces on the tennis court, hole in ones, goals, whatever it is, but just don't get vultured. I'll see you soon.